I want to talk about a subject. I've talked about it in a bunch of videos, but I want to come at it from another angle. You know, it talks about New Testament prophets. And then I have people say, there are no prophets in the New Testament. Never, never, never. And they get all wild. And they say, yo, you claim to be a, a prophet. All over here someone does are all false. <laughs> oh, can I prove you're wrong? Now, not only am I going to prove you're wrong on that statement, right now, hang on, I'm also going to show you a proof that the preacher maybe you've been involved with, hopefully you're out of there in some church, is 100% under the spirit of the Antichrist, either knowingly or at some degree being deceived himself. Okay, let's go back to the prophet. If I tell you prophetically that I'm going to expose this, I want you to know there is a prophet that you will agree with me is in the New Testament. Oh, you critics of Jesus. Do you know it says that Jesus is a prophet? Mm -hmm. Can you find the scripture where it says in, in here in the New Testament that Jesus is a prophet? You tell me he's not a prophet. Well, if he's a prophet, are there other prophets? Well, the Bible says there's false prophets. And part of the fivefold ministry in the New Testament is prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, and apostles. And I didn't even say them in the right order, but they're all there. So let me tell you, now we've established the fact there are prophets. Okay, so let's talk about the prophet. I'm going to tell you something that will expose the most dangerous. Did you get that? The most dangerous, the most deceptive, the most evil, the absolutely biggest problem that's the easiest to see. Once you understand, God, open your eyes and unplug your ears. Hang on here now. In this book, the New Testament. Okay? Simple. Simple. You have a preacher. The preacher has a church. And he's doing his thing. Jesus said, the prophet Jesus, the love of of money is the root of all evil. Now, look at that. Listen to it. It is the root of all evil. It is the point where all evil starts to grow. And it grows out of the root into the most dangerous and the most easiest thing to see because it is the most openly dangerous thing that there is inside the church. Oh, am I taking it the wrong way? No, I'm not. The love of money is the root of all evil. If I tell you this prophetically, will you believe me? Or do you want to listen to Jesus? He was a prophet. Who said it? <laughs> Jesus did. There's more than one prophet. Jesus said there'll be other people prophesied. And women. <laughs> okay. The old men dream dreams. Okay. What about it? And the young men shall prophesy. Let me tell you something. Jesus said that they are wolves in sheep's clothing. And they will steal old widows' purses. And they will make merchandise out of men. The love of money is the root of all evil. And that is the manifestation of the worst evil in the church. And now here comes the critic. Oh, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. Oh, you want to bet? I don't bet. But remember what Satan did to Jesus? Hmm? What did he do when Jesus started his ministry? The devil put Jesus on top of the mountain. And what did he do? He said, bow down and worship me. Satan's the God of this world. And I will give you... All the kingdoms and all the riches, the money, they're in. Jesus looked at him and rebuked him. Here's the point. When you look at these preachers, why are they taking your money? Hmm? When Jesus says they'll make merchandise. Huh? Now, you could say, well, that's the love of money. It's not all money. <laughs> we can have money and move it around and not love it. Isn't that true? Yes. I knew a church that had a wooden box in the back with a slot in it, and the preacher come out in front of 1,200 people. And there were probably 10 times that many in other meetings in other states all around this church with other Bible ministers. And he said, we never ask for money, never in any circumstances. And I'm going to tell you why. But if you have the Lord lead you, there's a box in the back with a slot. Whatever you do, do what Jesus said, do it in secret. Don't tell nobody. I don't want to know. We're not asking. We never will. End of story. And that's the way it was. Now, hang on. They had money come in, in. The Lord blessed them. But there was no love of money there. It's totally different. If you take and say, well, the preacher could ask for money, but his heart's good and he's not into that problem. Okay, my answer would be, yeah, could be. But you got to remember, it's the root of all evil. That love, that temptation is so strong. That's what Satan, the devil, put Jesus on top of the mountain and said, I'll give it to you all. So don't you think that same temptation could come to a preacher? Yes. I mean, they're swimming in money. A lot of them. Don't you think a lot of them love money? If you don't, you're not being honest. I think they do. So here's the problem. 
if you're trying to divide it into, well, these people don't love it in their heart, but they need it and they're working with it, and this bunch over here are greedy and wanting to gather it to them, if you try to separate it like that, you've got another problem. And here it is. In the entire New Testament, there's a teaching from one end of it to the other. Now, if you go back into the Old Testament, you have the nation of Israel, which is the kingdom of the Jews, which is what they call their government. They had a king. They had a kingdom. They had an institution, a nation. David was their king, and he levied taxes. Moses, levied, they levied taxes. It was called, back then, a tithe. Well, if you live in America, I don't care what country you live in, but let's say America, you have to pay federal income tax and all the other taxes to the government, to the nation of America. Okay? But in the New Testament, Jesus said our kingdom is not of this world. He said it. Kingdom restoration now theology the TV ministers use is not New Testament teaching. It's just the opposite. They use it to get your money. But in the New Testament, you have got two teachings concerning money besides what I've already said. Number one is from Jesus. Number two is from the entirety of the New Testament collectively together. Jesus said this, when you go preach, when I send you out, do not ask for money. Do not ask for gold. Don't take no gold, no silver from them, no brass, no script. Don't take it all. Take a walking stick. He didn't make an exception. He didn't say, don't ask for money part of the time. Now, Jesus could have said, oh, go out and ask for money, build big buildings. He didn't do it. And Jesus could have done it himself. When he had multitudes healing them and that, he could have said, I want you to give me all your money. We're going to build a giant cathedral, a beautiful Catholic temple. No. He said, my kingdom is not of this world, and my temple is you. You are the temple of God. Just the opposite of what you see in organized churches. So Jesus said, do not ask for money. Now you got a bigger problem than that. <laughs> I don't want to stop it right there. You have the entire teachings. Okay. Now, people gave. And you should give in secret. I don't have a problem with that. But asking for money by church leadership, the fivefold ministries, the deacons, the bishops, whatever you want to call them, there is no instruction. Paul talked to bunches of churches. He was an apostle establishing churches. There is not one verse in the whole New Testament where Paul or any of the disciples or any of the church leaders ask for money or say, this is how you're supposed to do it. It's not in there. It, it, if, it was a, if it was okay, you know, you're going to keep it in the right way, you know, not loving it, but doing it, there would be all kinds of instructions on how to do it, how much to take, when to do it, and how people should give, and you don't want to give too much. All of it. It's not there. The only thing that is there is Jesus saying the false church is going to make merchandise out of you and steal little widow's purses. Now, you drive down the road right now. Now, I'm going to start talking to you, warning you, and if you're a, if you're a five-fold minister, a pastor, I don't care what you are, you need to wake up, and whatever system you're in, pick up this Bible and rebuke it and reject it and come out from among her, that harlot. Before it's too late, we want to go up in the first fruits rapture. Uh, you know, the word rapture, I'm going to say caught up like the Bible says. The word rapture ain't in there. And then the false church goes into the tribulation. And there will be a remnant come out then, but we don't want to go through that mess. So listen to me carefully. If you're involved in a church that asks for money and they're passing a plate, telling you to give, trying to make a deal with you, putting plaques on the wall with the, the, the person that gives the most money, you have a preacher that's either doing it knowingly, knowing it's wrong, or he can be caught up in a system and not thinking, okay, and he's following the wrong teaching. Well, there's a problem with that. We have a every wind of doctrine. It is so dangerously cunning and craftiness, crafty, that they're lying in wait to deceive these false teachers with every wind of doctrine. That's in the Bible. Lying signs and wonders, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Do not take heed. Do not listen to them. Get away from them. You get your Bible, you go in your closet, go straight to Jesus, let him teach you the Bible. I'm telling you to go to Jesus. And here's the point. If that preacher isn't doing it, he's not following the Holy Spirit. Because this is not rocket science. This is a very simple thing that is the root of all evil. And I just laid it out and explained it. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling the teachers, the preachers, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, apostles, whatever you are, if you're asking for money, you're, you're diametric to what this Bible teaches. It's not that hard to understand, but it is extremely powerful. Why? Because the love of money is the root of all evil. They're swimming in it, and their doctrines are wrong. They are not following the simple doctrine of the gospel. God bless you.